how we have said multiple times that the RV life needs to be flexible? <sighs> What's happening today, Tony Tap? Good morning, folks. Today we are, we're actually sitting in Bellingham, Washington uh, at the Bellingham Linden KOA. It's a beautiful little campsite. We've got like, you'll probably hear the ducks from the duck pond behind us. Um, this week's video actually takes place a couple of weeks ago, uh, but it's gonna be different than our usual like travel vlog kind of videos. Uh, this week, since we talked about wanting to do things a little more on the positive side of full-time RVing, uh, that's what this week's going to be. We're going to talk a little bit about how you have to be flexible in this lifestyle. We had an issue pop up that required us to be flexible, a couple of issues actually, but one of them, because of it, we also wound up in a completely uh, amazing place. So this is not going to be our usual like travel vlog. This is going to be more informational. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the, a, a generator that we that we purchased. So, Tony. Yes. Explain to me what happened when we got to our reservation at Pinnacle National Park. Actually, don't explain to me. Explain to them. So, you know, I do a lot of research and I had looked at where our spot was to make sure we can get the RV in and everything. And it, it mentioned, you know, it's it was um, no hookups, but you know, it, it did say the campground had water. <laughs> I took that to assume that our camp spot had water. And unfortunately, when we pulled in, the camp spot did not have water. It, water the water spot was actually across the street from us. Our choices were we either hook back up and drag the trailer over there, or luckily we carry extra water hose. So I just strung a, cu a couple of water hoses together over to the spigot and then used that spigot to fill up the water tank for what we thought was going to be a three days of absolute fun and hiking and enjoying Pinnacle National Park. But we sort of had another issue as well. You know how we have said multiple times that the RV life needs to be flexible? <sighs> What's happening today, Tony Tao? We're gonna, we're supposed to leave tomorrow, but we're leaving today. Yeah, we're in Pinnacle. Hold on, let me, let me sit up so it doesn't look as weird. We are in Pinnacle National Park. Uh, we were supposed to be here until tomorrow. tomorrow. But we got an email this morning that said they are going to be paving the roads outside of the campground starting tomorrow morning. And they need, if, you're, if you have to leave, you have to have your rig out of the campground by 8 a.m. in the morning. And having to be out by 8 a.m. in the morning means we would have to get up very early in the morning at oh dark 30 and be hooking everything up in the dark. And are we going to do that? God, no, we're not going to do that. That's not fun. No. So, again, flexibility. So what we did is, well, well, first we got kisses from Gracie, and then we went to our Harvest Host account. If you don't have a Harvest Host account, get it's one. Because this, this is one of the reasons why. We went to our Harvest Host account and found us a nice little winery just up the road a piece. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to pull out of here today and uh, do a harvest host we're this evening. Rush, though. We don't have to rush. Oh, God, no. That's why I don't want to have to do it tomorrow because we would have to rush in the morning. Who wants to rush? No, we don't have to check in there until like 4 o'clock. Right. And I don't think it's that long of a drive. No, maybe two, two hours. hours. So, unfortunately, okay. you're not going to see much of Pinnacle. We're not, we were going to take a hike today, but that's not going to happen because we got to giddy up and get on the road. Although so. we did take some video of it yesterday. We took a, a couple of pictures and some video of the the peaks, which is like the landmark of Pinnacle. Which is really pretty. All right, let's uh, get this thing packed up and head for a winery. Hey, more wine! No? 
I'm yeah, just okay. watching somebody walk through my camp. Oh, well. Yeah. Some people, man. Don't walk through other people's camps. Read the rules. Don't walk through other people's camps. All right, we're going to stop complaining and start packing up. I'm See not you. I'm complaining. I'm, I'm giving tips. My arm's getting tired holding okay. this camera. Don't walk through other people's camps. Don't walk through other people's camps. We're going to hook up. We'll see you at a lovely winery uh, later this oh. afternoon. Good morning, folks, and welcome to the lovely Elliston Winery. Uh, we booked this same day yesterday, showed up. It is just a beautiful place. It's got this great old school like stone mansion on the property. It's got uh, a koi pond. It's even got ostriches. We did have a little bit of an issue trying to get the, the rig level because the parking lot is kind of on a slope. It kind of slopes up and down. We started out trying to park the up down way and could not get it to level at all. So we wound up having to park kind of horizontal. This morning, we ran our batteries down a little bit too low. They're down to about 30%. Uh, part of that was because we forgot to put the fridge into boondock mode. So I am going to break out our generator, plug it in so that we can get a little bit of a charge before we leave here. But that will also give me an opportunity to talk a little bit about this generator. So we knew we had to upgrade from our 2000 watt Honda generator to something a little bit bigger, mainly because we wanted the ability to run uh, one of the air conditioners in our rig. So we had kind of decided we were gonna go with a larger like Westinghouse or one of the Furmans from Costco uh, because we wanted dual, dual fuel, but we were also kind of bummed because I didn't want to be hauling around a hundred pound generator. I happened to be looking through through Amazon for generators, and I found this one. This is a Pulsar. I'd never seen them before, so this I can't really tell you whether long-term this is gonna work or not, but so far it's been working brilliantly. It provides 4,000 watts on gas, 3,700, no, 3,600 watts on propane, and it does pr provide enough to run one of our air conditioners. The beauty of this, this thing is the, pretty much the same size as our old uh, Honda 2000 watt generator. It comes in a small package, it weighs only 47 pounds, which was important to us because we are towing with a single rear wheel uh, one ton ram, and we need to keep our eyes on weights. So, with all that said, I'm gonna go hook this generator up, run it for about an hour so we can get a good charge on the batteries. And then we're gonna close everything up and we are off to another harvest host at another winery this evening up in Redwood Valley, California. Generator's in position. Now I need to go get my uh, surge protector um, and I also gotta get the propane hooked up. This is one of those times in life where it doesn't pay to be tall. The generator comes with a propane hose and regulator. After turning on the gas, I bleed a little bit to ensure the gas supply to the generator. If you're using a surge protector, you'll need one of these nifty neutral ground binding plugs. Link in the show notes. This 30 amp adapter plug comes with the generator and will allow you to plug in your 30 amp to 50 amp dog bone. You can then plug into this snazzy surge protector that I'm trying to show you, but uh, getting my arm in the way. Again, link in the show notes. All right, everything's plugged in. Uh, this thing can be a little bit difficult to start sometimes. One of the things that I found is if you turn it all the way to the start setting, and pull a few times that'll get the propane into it then go back to the run setting and pull and it usually starts i want to make sure that the low idle is off and that our fuel source is to propane all right there we go we are up and running um, now I'm going to slide in here because Tony Town wants to cook some bacon on the microwave. So we're going to see if this thing will run the microwave while it's charging and cooking bacon. Let's go. Baby, I believe we're cooking bacon. We also didn't turn the lights on in here, so everything's all wiggly, wiggly, wiggly on the videos. All right, it just ended. Do we have bacon? Why, well, yes, we do. 
Yay, bacon! For those of you that don't know, this is the best part of travel day, is Tony Tao's breakfast burrito in the morning. She does amazing breakfast burritos. Ooh, that's some bright sunlight. There we go. Now we have exposure on the eggs. Here, you want better exposure? Watch this. Bam, baby! Correctly exposed huevos. Let's eat. Just what? so you know, I'm a Why? Because you have to put up with I me. I tolerate this. And that is? It's for Gracie's bacon. Gracie always gets bacon. Gracie mm. always gets bacon because she is the most spoiled dog that anybody has ever owned. If reincarnation is a thing, I want to be reincarnated as a middle-aged couple's chihuahua. And there you go. That is the image of an absolutely spoiled dog. All right, well, we're back on the road. What's your thoughts on Elliston Winery, Tony Tao? That's awesome. You went and bought a bottle of wine and a really great charcuterie board, and they have ostriches. <laughs> I think the ostriches are really cool. To look out my bedroom window and to see ostriches is like, Pretty cool. A couple of things on it going in and out. If you have a larger rig, a taller rig, um, you, you're gonna have to be careful because there are some low hanging trees coming in and out of there. I just go slow. Yeah, so just go slow. As far as lengthwise, uh, it says it can take up to a 45 foot rig. It absolutely can take up to a 45 foot rig. We are off heading north to another winery. Oh, bumps, bumps. Ugh. Ugh for another Harvest Host night up uh, around Redwood City at a place called Testa Winery. So, unless you got anything else to add. The temperature here was perfect. Yeah, it absolutely was. I mean, the talking, like we didn't have to, we didn't need the air, it was just gorgeous. And the, the, it just, it was so pretty. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, we will see you up at uh, Redwood Valley at Testa Winery. We're at the Harvest Host that we're gonna be staying at tonight, which is Testa Winery, but this place has an interesting check-in. Um, they have a wine and coffee store that is separate from the vineyard. So we're at the wine and coffee store where we have to check in and you know make our, our Harvest Host purchase. And then they're gonna give us a gate code so we can go find the vineyard. What was it like in the coffee and wine store? Oh, cute. Cute, cute, cute. So I picked up a bottle of rosé and they had cakes. So I picked up a piece of cake. Nice. Because, you know, it's it's past lunchtime. Because who doesn't like Monday. cake? Let me see the map. And here's the gate code. I just had to find a sign of uh, waiver of liability and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're not going to screw something up mm -hmm. and destroy things. And... Mm. All right. I'm not so... going to hurt myself and sue them for it. This is where the really short jacks in the back scare me. Yeah. Looks like anything's dragging, so we're good. Check in here, release, uh, take, purchase wine. We purchased wine, check. Recalculation, follow the road for two miles. We know where we're going to stay on this. Now, straighten her out to go parallel to the fence over here. And I think that's your best bet for even right there. All right, stand by, let's get some measuring on it. We made it to Testa Winery, to where we have to park. It's kind of, it's not all that picturesque. It's kind of a dirt lot next to a lumber yard. But we did discover something about 35 minutes away from here. Yeah, we had to kill time anyway, because it's warm and we don't, since we're boondocking, we can't run, we don't want to run the air conditioner. And what did we find? A brewery that is dog friendly, dog park kind of friendly. Mm -hmm. It's up in the hills, so it's going to be a little bit cooler up there. And we looked at the brew, the beer list, and the beers look friggin' amazing. And it's been a few weeks since we've been to a proper brewery. We've right. been doing wines, wines, wines. So yeah, we're going to go get a cold beer. So we'll see you at Anderson Valley Brewing. Tony Tao, what do you got? A lager, it's a rice lager, and they're ice cold compared to the last place we went to. 
Yeah. It's, it's definitely really? it's definitely a rice lager. All right, so next is the other. I'm going to do the other lager. It doesn't have a lot of aroma to it. All right, two really good beers. Try a sip of that Would you one. Would like to try my Pilsner? Yeah. See what I mean by there's lots of flavors in it? That's like a super flavorful lager, right? Really? Yeah, it's caramely. It's, quite, it's almost like a Marzen. Mm-hmm. Definitely sour, but not, ooh. <laughs> you want another one? You gotta sit. You gotta sit. High five. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. And then yours is the, the mushroom candy cap. cap mushroom. The mushroom IPA. IPA. Okay, I want to see your I, I want to see your reaction to this one first. Oh no. <laughs> like I told you, I don't know if I like it or not. What's this one again? It's oh, it's the blood, blood orange. orange. Goose, it, goose. It's the blood okay. orange. We're calling goose it the goose. It's goose. the blood orange goose. Because the goose makes you loose. Oh. Yeah. Get you right, right here, right there. Yeah, that's a definitely a sour. Who are you talking to? You talking to the other dog? Just talk. Don't bark. Good girl.